Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball video for you this evening. We've been working on this Gottlieb Outer Space pinball machine for quite a while now for a customer. And we filmed two videos of us fixing it. So if you're into that kind of thing, you might want to go find it. But if you're just cruising around looking for videos of someone badly playing a pinball machine, then stay tuned. We'll get to that in a minute. A uh, gentleman uh, emailed us, said, hey, I've got this old outer space pinball machine. I think he said it was his grandmother's, I believe. I may be wrong about that. Um, wanted to know if we could fix it. I said, yes, we can. He brought it to us. We're going to fix it. Now, we didn't do too much cosmetically to it, a little bit. But in general, uh, it was just all about let's get the thing working again, which we have done. So if you haven't seen those repair videos, you might want to go watch them. There was all kinds of stuff wrong with this thing. It was so damn broke, but now it's oh so sweet. So, we're going to check it out, and then we're going to look at the rules, and then we're going to play it. What do you think about that? Doesn't that sound like a good thing to try? So check out the cabinet. This thing has seen some wear in its life. It's a 1972, early 72. The, the four-player version of this game was called Orbit, and Orbit came out in December of 71, uh, and then it looks like Outer Space came out in January of 72, which was a two-player version. So the reason that they did that was uh, they would put out the four-player, and it was a little bit more money. The two-player would be slightly cheaper because you, they could save a bunch of, of um, parts. It's a, little, it's a little easier to make a two-player. But it, took, it also took the engineers a little bit of time to get the thing designed right and test it to make sure that it worked fine with the two player and all that. But by you know, by this time they probably had a system set up where they could knock it out pretty cool. I mean pretty quick. But it does take a little bit of different stuff to make it a two player instead of a four player. You can you can drop some stuff out of the uh the game that you don't have to install if you're only doing two players. So it's it's very worn, but it uh you know it's kind of like a rat rod version of a pinball machine. A lot of the paint's missing. The back glass is a little messed up. Uh, the play field is in pretty nice shape, to be honest. Uh, but whenever we got it, it had rust all over it. To the point that you can't really clean up that much, that much surface rust. So we cleaned it up a little bit. And then we painted it. So the door originally would have been a nice chrome uh, but it had so much rust on it that it is now a nice gray <laughs> right? um, and the same thing with the coin entry plate so those originally would have been nice and chrome the lockdown bar is still in great shape um, the legs would have been chrome but they were horribly pitted as well you can see where there's some Paint overspray and stuff. I mean, this thing has been through it. They have beat this thing. And like I said, it had a lot of it had a lot of uh, stuff going on where lots of things that weren't working on it. But we got it. Everything's cool. It's all good. So it's a two-player game, like we said, instead of a four-player. Um, the back glass is a really cool back glass, but it's starting to fade away so the red has faded to the point that you can see the light bulbs through it um, which is kind of common you know that's happened to a lot of games unfortunately you can buy a new back glass I would imagine but you're going to be looking at $300 plus shipping probably or you can get another used one that's slightly better than this one but still has a lot of the same problems so you know it's one of those things where just leave it and play it. You know what I mean? Damn. It ain't perfect, but nothing's really going to make it perfect. Just leave it alone and play it. Have fun with it. And as you know, it's more fun to compete. So they really wanted 50 cents a game instead of 25 cents a game. All right. So uh, let's check out this back glass. I don't know who drew it, unfortunately. But it's pretty damn good, really. Notice it says a game of skill prominently. They had to do that because they wanted to make sure that you didn't think that it was for gambling purposes. So you were looking at, the more you look at it, the more you can see. You were looking at a guy and a girl 
inside of some kind of spacecraft, right? And they are looking out the window at some kind of planet. So inside the spacecraft, there are all these little gizmos and things going on. So there's some kind of box here with some switches on it and a plug coming off of it and a little thing on the side and a little screen with some kind of little swirly thing going on and some more buttons and it says ball in play. And then there's a bunch of little buttons under that. And so your one, two, three, four, five show up in there. And then on the side, of course, it says game over. And then down here below it, there's some, it's like a similar looking thing. It says one or two players can play at the same time. Players one or two. That light, when you're playing, it says one, but then whenever the game's over, it says two, or I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but everything's cool. It all plays good. And then there's a little uh, stand with a little fuse sticking off, or a little uh, tube sticking off the side of it. There is a some kind of screen here that kind of looks like an oscilloscope that everybody keeps telling me I need to learn how to, to use. That's where it says tilt, if it tilts. Uh, there's some kind of other thingamabob over here with another screen on it and some more sliders or something. There's another box back here that's some kind of thing with little buttons and stuff. Who knows what that is? Some kind of rod or something. Oh, it's on the, it's on the side of the... Um, score thing. So the score thing is like some kind of equipment as well with, with some wires coming off the top. And then the same thing over here. It's a similar look. Right? And so out the window of this porthole, which is large. Look at the guy's head and then look at the size of the porthole. Out the window he's seeing that and he's seeing the ship outside. He, we're seeing a planet. I don't know what that is. Maybe that's a black hole starting off or something. <laughs> and then we've got the two figures. So you got the guy with the nice wavy hair. And I loved how at the time, and it wasn't just uh, Gottlieb, it was uh, some of the other companies were doing it too. Look how they did shadows with yellow and purple. The guy's hair surely wasn't purple, but it looks really good. It looks right, right? So his face looks yellow. It looks like some kind of light is shining on his face and illuminating everything. And then the, the, the highlights of his hair are green, and then the shadow is purple. So they made it work with yellow, green, and purple. Right? That's pretty cool. I mean, wow. And then you have this woman here. And look what they've done with her. You can see her hand. Um, I don't know if she's trying to push something or if she's pointing out of the way or whatever. But she's done a lot of the same way. The, the, the light that illuminates her is like a green, but the shadow is a purple. And look, they even have like, like what is this, you know, like the, the way that her face is drawn in. You know, if I'm not an artist, so if I started doing that, I'd think, oh boy, I really screwed this up. But look, it looks fantastic. They did a great job. And she has blue hair, <laughs> right? But looking at it, you kind of get the idea, okay, she's a blonde and he's a brunette. Like you can kind of just tell by looking at him, even though They've done all this art in yellow, green, and pink. I mean, yellow, green, and purple. Just wow. Um, and then also, you've got an expression on both of their faces. So this guy, what's he thinking? He kind of has this confident look. And then the woman kind of has this surprised look, you know. And just cool. Lots of expression. Looks great. And here it is. This thing was made in 71. So we're talking 49 years later. And we fixed it with very, at very little cost. And the thing is still working. The back glass has seen a little bit better days. The cabinet has seen a little bit better days. But the damn thing still plays. So uh, something to be said for that. So on the play field, they, you know, the, the art on the play field doesn't really... Um, the, some of the colors mirror the back glass, but the art doesn't really show the same as the back glass. So like on the plastics, you've got just this on this side. You have a guy in a spacesuit, but he doesn't really look like the guy on the back glass. Um, kind of got a similar spacescape there. Over here, they've gone to just using uh, geometrics to kind of show what's going on. Um, you do have a rocket ship on the spinner. Uh, just their typical 
pop bumpers, nothing special about them. Some kind of little rocket here. Um, looks like the lunar lander here. That's pretty cool, actually. Look at that. That's pretty cool. So, and then you've got just generic little rockets and little clouds and stuff drawn as a lot of the art. So a lot of it's geometric. And there's an Earth with a bunch of little satellites going around it that light up as the spinner spins. Right. Okay, so let's we're going to read the instructions because you may not know it, but all pinball machines are more fun if you read the instructions. Outer space instructions. One or two players, five balls per player. I usually put them on three ball, but this is a customer's, and he had it on five, so I'm leaving it on five. That's probably how he remembers playing it when he was younger. Insert one coin and wait for machine to reset before inserting coin for second player. Pretty typical. Players take turns shooting as shown on back glass. Also pretty typical. Points are scored as indicated. Pretty typical. Spaceship advances one step for each 100 points. So the spaceship they're talking about, uh, what I was calling a satellite. So basically advances one step. Is actually, I think it goes that way, actually. No, whatever. One step for each hundred points. Ten advances increases the bonus one step. So if you spin all the way around, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you see there's ten lights. Uh, it it sends your bonus ladder up one one step, which means that if you scored a bonus, you get another thousand points. Bonus is scored upon completion of ball in play. Okay, so whenever you drain, you score your bonus. A tilt does not disqualify a player. Matching last two numbers in score to number that appears on back glass after game is over scores one replay. So the, the rules are very simple, right? <laughs> um, strangely, it has a 15,000 bonus is the highest it can go. I don't know why they did it like that, but you go up to 10, and then it starts going up again, and you can get to 5, and that's it. Now we, And we showed that in the repair video, how, why that was like that and how it does that. So you got that. Um... The playfield has some interesting little design quirks. So the spinner here gives you 100 points every time it goes around, which means that it also spins the lights around. So that's kind of cool, because if you hit the spinner, your lights start moving. Kind of neat. Um, you've got three pop bumpers, but if you look, they're not really symmetrically placed. The one is off to the side. The reason for that, I think, is because it gives you... A little more oomph to sometimes it will knock the ball through that gate. So I was reading on the Internet Pinball Database and some of the reviewers were talking about it. And basically there is a cool shot from here through the spinner up to the pop bumper and through the gate. Right? And they were saying that was like the sweetest shot of all time. Well, if you make it through that gate, you get 3,000 points and the ball falls back down in the shooter lane. It also says closes gate. It's talking about this gate down here. This gate, if you look at the bottom of the play field, the right side has no in lane, which plays into the shot for the very target, but there's no in lane on the right, there's just an out lane. So the ball can't be saved by the in lane, which doesn't really matter because it's got a bigger uh, kicker anyway. But if you go through the left in lane, it opens the gate. So as you come through here, it opens this gate, which means over here there's no way to lose the ball now. Right? So the left end lane gives you a right end lane. Kind of cool. Um, so the craziest damn shot is this very target. So this is one of Gottlieb's little things. They put these on a bunch of games. Basically, depending on how far back you knock it, you get a different score. If you knock it all the way back, if the special is lit and you knock it all the way back, you get 5,000 points. I, or I guess you just get the special. I don't know if you get 5,000 and the special. I guess it depends on what they've got the special set for. On this one, it's probably set for a free game, even though it's on free play. It might be better if you could set it to where you win a free ball. Um, but on, you know what? On this game, you can't. I think they had this set up where you can make it an add-a-ball game, and I don't think that there's a same player shoots again, so you can't win a free ball no matter what you do. 
But anyway, so if the special is a free game and this thing was on a quarter, if that's lit and you knock that Vera target all the way back, you win a free game. So it's kind of a cool shot, but the, here's the whole problem, right? The whole problem is this is in the era before the flippers were super, super strong. So you'll see whenever we play that these flippers are not the badass flippers that you see on modern games. Like, they're not crazy weak, but... Uh, so... Over here, you have an end lane. So, the, you know, just the way to, you, you know, and you, you, I'm sure everybody watching this can play better than me, but just talking about the theory of the game, right? Over here, you have, a, you have an end lane. Well, what that means is if the ball comes down the end lane, you're getting a rolling ball. So whenever you flip it, you're kind of curling it up the play field, right? So you're, you, you're, it gives you more trajectory where the ball already is moving and you just change the movement. And with the flip, you can get a pretty strong shot. Over here, you have no end lane, really, right? So it's harder to do. Now, you can catch the ball with either flipper like you do on a more modern machine, but if you catch the ball on this one, let it roll down, and then hit that very target, you're usually not going to have it strong enough that you can knock that all the way back. So the only way to really knock it all the way back is if you get a ball that already has some momentum on it. So sometimes you will get a ball that's coming down just right, you hit it just right, bam, it will knock that thing all the way back. So it's a lot harder shot than it looks. It looks like, oh, hell, you could just knock that out. Just hit that over and over and over again. You get 5,000 points and five bonuses every time you hit it. I mean, you roll this damn thing over. It's not that easy. So uh, one of the things that we did whenever we worked on it was we high tapped this thing. So you can put uh, a lot of the old EMs on high tap, which was designed where if you put it in a location where the voltage was low, if you moved one wire on the transformer, it would make it where all of the coil voltage was a little higher. And so we've done that, even though we've got it plugged into the wall at regular voltage. Um, and so by doing that, it has made all of the coils a little bit stronger. So the flippers are stronger, the pop bumpers are stronger, but it's still, they are nothing like a modern machine. And you'll see that here in a minute. So it's a, you know, it's a challenging game. This is not the greatest game ever designed, but I do like that it's, asymmetrical. I like that it's got a, a different shot on the left and the right. I like that the pop bumpers are a little off. I like the, um, uh, you know, where you're trying to get that top roll over to advance the bonus and it's in the middle with the skill shot. I like the gate set up. Um, oh, whenever you go through that gate and get your 3,000 points, it shuts this gate down here. So it's a, it's a cool game. I like the setup of it, but it's, you know, it, it's, it, it's kind of a... You, you have to kind of get lucky on some of these shots. Like if you don't get that ball where you got some momentum, you're not going to knock that all the way back. So we'll see what I can pull off on it. I'll get the tripod and we'll play it a little bit. Um, like I said, it's outer space. This is also the same as orbit. And then later on, I don't remember the name of the game. Somebody can reply below. But about 1988, Gottlieb made another game with this same freaking layout. And the, it's the exact same game. They just changed the artwork. Everything's in the exact same spot, and uh, it was one of their street games where they they called them street games where they were a little cheaper to make, a little cheaper to buy. Um, we may have done a video of that on here. I don't know if we did a video or not, but we certainly had it in. If I did make a video, I'll put it. I'll, I'll put a link to it or something. But um, I'll get the tripod and we'll play it a little bit. Okay, so here we go. We're going to try it and see if I can get anywhere on it. The only thing, there are a couple little light bulb issues. Whenever this thing spins around, it always lights these two lights together twice. You know, When that one's lit, it lights that one. When that one's lit, it also lights that one. It's because the we went over it in the repair video, but there's a little unit that spins around, and the, the little rivets had worn down a little bit too much to where it's touching two at that one spot instead of just touching one. It's minor stuff, people. It's minor stuff. And also, I'll just wrap myself out. This damn bulb is not on. Ugh. And then also, another one that's driving me crazy. This 3000 bulb is a little weak. But besides that, everything works pretty good. So, uh, we'll try it a little bit and see what you think. I'll call out the score. So, we're at 12,780 right now. Let's see if I can reach the start button. Y'all are writing away. I 
I just told you the score before I started the game. <laughs> that was the score of the last game. It was set on five ball, which I don't usually like to do. It's almost like cheating, I think. But I know some people prefer five ball. Look at that. Right in the skill shot. Whoop. 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 Getting a little action here. Ooh. Mmm. I shouldn't have called out the action here. 6,210. Three thousand points. Mm. Ten thousand seven hundred and thirty. <laughs> Come on. Eleven thousand six hundred and forty. Boy, the pops are pretty nice. I haven't hit the spinner once. So you can see, you can see that it's not strong enough really to kill that advance, I mean that very target. You gotta get it just right. You gotta get a little wind behind you. The light you're seeing flashes that special light coming on, which so it, it, it almost works like a flasher. Well, I went through the spinner one way or the other. Oh, no. We gotta do better than that, people. All right, let's see what we can get going. Mm, what a shot. Oh, I should also mention that I have the I have the back legs legs jacked up a little bit. All right, so this is a cot shot. Hmm. Boop boop boop. So. Hmm. I'm trying to show you the difference between the. The weak flippers and the flippers if you get a good thing going. I mean, they've got strength. I mean, you can knock it all the way to the back with them, but... Mmm. See, like, see, see that? They're fast when they want to be to screw you over. I forgot, I was supposed to be telling you the score. 24,820. Mm. So I got 2,000 that time. Mm. Drained it. Thirty-six thousand eight fifty. Oh, well, I couldn't. I couldn't trap it. <laughs> Come on! Why are they doing me like that? Double wind lit. Boy, that 3,000 doubled on me. Isn't that great? <laughs> 47,730. But hey, we're getting better. Game of three. 
Game Trace. A little Spanish lingo for you there to keep it interesting. See, like, you know, look, I mean, it's the damn flippers are, they're all right, but if they had a little more, a little more pizzazz, and I know you can mod them, you can put bigger coils in it. Hmm. I may have to check if this thing's level. I'm getting it down that lane more than I'm getting it down this lane. Yeah! That was awesome. So I went through the 3000 gate, people. I'm on ball three already, though, and it ain't looking good. Playing with my food too much. Ball four, 15,790. Yeah, 3,000, baby, 3,000. And you don't even lose anything. All it does is turn the gate off, but it's like you get a reflip, basically. Ooh, about made the guy's special shot that they were talking about on there. Nice pass. You see that? You see that? That clever save there. <laughs> I would like to knock the hell out of that very target at least once to prove that it's even possible. All right, ball five, and we are at twenty-five eight forty. So the double when lit, I believe, you, you can't even see the double when lit. There you go. Now you're with us. The double when lit uh, is, I believe, on just the fifth ball. Or it was probably on the third ball if it's, on, if it's set on three balls. tell you what I scored, but it's not really that important, right? I mean, it's not really that important how high my score is. So we're just having fun here. <laughs> All right. I think this is going to be the one. This time we're going to get a big old score. Not like that, we ain't. It kind of cheats. A little bit. All right, so that was 4,630 points. The majority of which I got falling out of the damn play field. Oh, I got the 3,000 points and didn't even go through the gate. I want to I want to catch the ball, trap it so I can show you how the flipper what the flipper's capable of. From just a dead flip. Hmm. All right, ball three, and that is thirteen thousand two hundred ten. Five twenty-one thousand five eighty. There we go. Oh man, did you see that? <laughs> Come on. Come on. I'm 
go out that little gate. That's what we want. I got two again. Hmm. I could have got that left one up. I think I would have knocked it out of away a little bit. Not bad though, 24,550 on the first ball. If my battery doesn't die here on my camera. Do it! Oh, it didn't do it. <laughs> hmm. Thirty-four thousand four fifty. Mm-hmm. Ball three. Damn. Okay, I won't even say what the score is now, but it's ball four. Didn't score many that time. I was scoring some tensies that time. open on the right so if I fall out it'll be alright but not the left Ugh. all right 46,630 last ball oh come on the gate was open oh my lord what is it doing to me Okay, folks, so that is enough of that. That is Gottlieb's Outer Space Pinball Machine. Hope you enjoyed it. It's kind of fun to play. A little tricky to get that very target shot. I wish I could have slapped that back real good for you on video. But we hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you want to see the games that we have available for sale, go to our website, lionsarcade.com. Right? It's always up to date, even if it's 10 years after this video was filmed. You can also come and see us. We're in downtown Rock Hill, South Carolina, and we have a showroom full of arcade games, pinball machines that we're always working on. This was just the latest one, so we filmed a little video for you, our YouTube friends. Um, now, if you can't come visit us because you're nowhere near and you don't want to buy one, that's fine. Just subscribe to us here on YouTube. Every time we get one of these in, we film a little video or several. This one was the third video that we filmed on the same game, two of them fixing it and one of them playing it. Um, so just subscribe to us and uh, we do videos like this all the time we appreciate it leave your comments below and let us know what you think uh, also you'll notice below we have a link to Amazon we're, we're showing you something on Amazon if you go click that link anything you buy on Amazon doesn't have to be what's on the link anything it doesn't raise your prices any or, or anything like that but it gives us a royalty for whatever you buy on on YouTube I mean on Amazon so if you go buy a house on Amazon it gives us a royalty or if you go buy uh, some uh, uh, rice <laughs> uh, to cook tonight, it gives us a little royalty. So we appreciate everybody that's been doing that. That's pretty cool. And it doesn't cost you anything, so we really like it. So thank you for the people that have been doing that. Leave your comments below and let us know what you think. 
and give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film this for you. Now, one last thing for a special treat for everybody that stayed to the very end of the video. I found the, the machine that they remade. We did have one, but we didn't film a video of it. It is called Super Orbit. And I'm going to put some cool music for the space theme here. And I'm going to show you pictures of a Gottlob Super Orbit that we had a few years back. Um, and you can just see how it's exactly the same. So here's the, here's the play field of this one. Right? You've been watching it. Now here is Super Orbit. We'll see you on the next video, folks.